All right, hey guys, my name is Kyle, and um, I'm gonna do a quick, not really a quick, it's gonna take me about 10 minutes or so, but I'm gonna do a product review. Um, I don't review products, but uh, my wife and my four kids, even cousins and grandparents, we come down to the beach and we get to stay here for the entire month. Um, so we've got four weeks, and I've spent the last four weeks setting up a particular tent. This is a, a, a Nesso brand, N-E-S-O, and it's a tent um, and it's different than the normal pop-up tents and you might have started seeing them on the beaches they become a little more and more popular um, while we've been here i've set this thing up at least 26 times we've been here for 28 days it's the last day we're here and i thought i would do a quick video um, this is the largest version they have they i think they have three different models i could be incorrect so but we chose to get the largest one and i'm going to tell you if you're going to buy this product you're looking at it spend about 155 160 dollars depending on where you get it from I would go ahead and spend that versus getting the smaller one that's like $79. It takes the same amount of work to set the, the big one up as it does a little one. It's not like you're buying a little one, it's gonna be easier to set up. You still gotta fill up sandbags, you still gotta do all those different things. So get the bigger one because you'll see in a minute, it's a lot of space. This product comes in this bag, all right? It's not that heavy. You can put it on your shoulder. Um, you can carry another chair. Uh, we, you see over here, we bring a whole beach cart that's got stuff like this week we've got uh, five adults and eight kids and so this is a great thing to just be able to set on your car set somewhere and not have to worry about bringing those big pop-up tents uh, in the past we've always brought pop-up tents and they've done great however the wind affects them they break them they bend them they rust out in a year or so and I think this is a product that's gonna last me several years and it's lasting all month okay all right inside this product you have several different things You've got these stakes, or excuse me, these uh, these tent poles. The cool thing about these is they fold up. There's a rubber band in the middle, and it helps you put them together. All right, you just kind of put them together like this. And it comes with two of them. I'm going to highly recommend, and you'll see why, I'm going to recommend you buying two more, okay? Two more. And I didn't buy two more. Actually, I just made me two out of some PVC. And they've worked great this whole trip um, however you can't just put your PVC mine's a little hard to get on because I've used them so much there's so much sand in there I can rinse them out and make it easier but I wouldn't recommend doing the PVC I think the PVC works just as good if not better however you can't pack the PVC up in this cute little bag and put it on your shoulder you got to have a beach cart to be able to tow it around with next we have the material basically the whole premise behind it this material is a spandexy um, material and it's very stretchy and that's the whole point what we're gonna do is we have to stretch this material tight and I'll show you how now one thing that it doesn't come with is a shovel I would highly recommend that it's got this little front pocket on it that you go get you a little shovel I've got this shovel right here if you can't if you don't want to carry something like that get you a, like a little garden shovel you can stick in here so you can help dig and, and get some sand. It's designed so that you can just pull the sand with your hands, but that takes way too long and I don't feel like you're getting enough sand. Um, so what we do is we come over here and these are sandbags. It's made out of the same material. Mine's dirty because the other day when we set it up or yesterday when we set it up, it rained on us. And when I put it up, it was raining. So all you do is come in a spot. I use my shovel. You can use your hands if you want. I use my shovel and I start filling up this bag. Now there's a couple keys to this product. Throughout this month that we've been here, I've helped several people, I've witnessed several people set up this product and other tents like it. Because you don't have to go to Nesso. I recommend Nesso because I've dealt with them, I've talked to them individually. I had an issue um, when I first got it, there was a little, a little small hole in, one, in the corner of my fabric. They replaced the whole top and they've had very good customer service. I hope they get to watch this video and, and maybe even get to use it um, on their website of some sort. But if they don't, I understand this is just for everybody else. What I do is now pick it up. Now, when I pick it up, I notice there's some more room in here. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put some more sand in there. The key to this tent is to keep it stretched tight. And the only way to keep it stretched tight is if you have a lot of sand. So that's how I fill that one up. Got it? I mean, it's pretty heavy, I can't pick it up. I'm gonna do something else in a minute to that sandbag. I'm actually gonna bury it. And Nessa recommends burying it, but the problem is, is how do you bury that big old hole if you don't have a shovel? And so that's why I bring the shovel. Now I stretch this over here like this. I don't need to pull it tight quite yet because I'm gonna fill 
fill it up. All I'm gonna do this all four corners. I might speed the video up at this point and just show you how I fill up these sandbags and then I'll stretch it out. Keep filling it up. I pick up a little bit, it, gives, it moves all the sand. I found I got some more room. Keep filling. Once I get there, that's about, about right. I stretch it here. I might decide to pull a little bit more because you want a lot of tension. I want to have enough tension where I can pick it up a little bit, but you notice if I put that pole underneath it, it's probably going to drag that sandbag closer. I don't want that sandbag to come any closer. That's why we're going to bury it in a minute. So I come to the next corner. This uh, tent itself is a, um, it's, I think it's got like the SPF 50 rating. So while you're underneath it, you're getting blocked pretty much from the sun but there is a little bit of sun that comes through. And while I'm sitting over it, underneath it, of course I'm excited that I'm under shade, but I also can tell there's a little bit. We've got a, my wife and I have a uh, seven month old. And so it's helped him tremendously, but sometimes I can tell that he's probably got a little bit of sun. But once again, I still think it's, it's perfect. I mean, I keep filling these sandbags up. They do sell some steaks, so if you need to set this up outside, they have some steaks that you can use that are great for setting up outside. I actually have some very long steaks and that I've used, I used one time instead of the sandbags. I just staked it down. But um, I just want to show you with the sandbags. Same thing, we got the last one over here. You can tell some of my, my, my tent, I mean, my sometimes you're beach cart might get in the way but you just move it over so I'm doing what I'm doing I'm filling them up so one thing that I've noticed on other people that have this particular brand and on other brands I think there's like three or four brands that sell this same component where you stretch it out put some poles underneath it and so to so on but I've seen people with this brand and they don't put enough sand in there and so when they start putting that pole underneath it all it does is move forward and when wind hits it it just keeps moving it forward it keeps moving it makes the, the material loose so you can see how I'm stretching out even further boom now come on over here Braden so I can look at it and tell that it's pretty tight if I was gonna put a pole underneath it it's not too much resistance I might want a little bit tighter it doesn't need to be super tight if the wind is, if it's really windy that day, the tighter the better. Because the wind's gonna like the fact that it has that looseness, it's gonna make it flop. Your, your poles are gonna wanna move. And so I'm gonna now take my shovel and dig out a hole. This is probably the most time consuming thing of the whole project. And this is something that I choose to do. Other people haven't done it and their tents were fine, but I've never set my tent up this whole four weeks that I've been here and was worried whether or not it was going to fall down. And everybody that sees my tent comes and says, how would you get it to look like that? Or how is it so tight and almost look like a circus tent? Well, it's because I filled up the bags really good and I dug this good hole. And I took this sandbag and I dropped it in there cover that hole up and now that bag is not going to move okay all right so sorry I got some sand in my eye I did make a cool product I just did on my own just because I was sitting in the tent one day and I um, started playing around with an idea so I made these little things right here and they're, I call, I've called them sand anchors. And all I do is the same thing. I dig a hole. So instead of filling up a sandbag, I dig out a hole and I get it about 12 inches deep. And then what I was doing is burying this block that I made. And I just put a little eye hook on the top, put some rope on the top of it, 
let that rope hang out of the hole. Just put that in there flat, bury that up. And I was taking that same black rope, instead of using the sandbags, I just took a rock climber hook and hooked right here and hooked in this thing right here. And that's not gonna come up. At this angle, when it pulls on an angle, you can't get it out the ground. But if I pull directly up with it, I gotta use some muscles and I can pull it out of the ground. And I've used this multiple times. It's actually worked out for me to go faster that way than filling up the bags and then burying the bag. So that's just somebody at home. If, when I sit under these tents and I watch my kids play, I start thinking about ideas and ways to make things better. That wouldn't necessarily be good for, for Nestle to sell, I don't think, because their whole premise is be to take that bag and use your hands and fill up the sandbags. And I just use my shovel, so there you go. Braden, Braden, how much time have we been so far in our video? 10 or 11 minutes. 11 minutes. So I bet this tent would take somebody about 10 minutes to set up if they weren't doing all this talking and introductions and so on and so on. So I set two of them up the other day side by side. The hard part when you put two of them side by side is that they're not really that square. And like a pop-up tent, you can put two of them up and then connect them and you just got all that space. And so these, there was a little bit of gap between the two. So if you got a lot of friends and family and you wanna stay close to each other, there's gonna be a little bit of space between you if you need to use them. I didn't set two up anymore because honestly, this thing is so big underneath it. This thing is so big underneath it. We ended up wasting all that space. We ended up wasting a lot of shade. We didn't need all that much shade. This week I got five adults and uh, eight kids. And we have enough shade with this particular one. I think this is called the Gigante. There's a Grande, which is the medium size. This is like a 12 by 12. And I believe it's bigger than a 12 by 12. I believe that when you stretch this thing out, it's actually bigger than a 12 by 12. Once again, this is probably the most time consuming, just burying these sandbags. But I believe it's what makes a big difference in keeping this thing from shifting or budging. All right, one more, and then we're about done with this, y'all. That's how easy this thing is. When I do this at home, I mean, when I do this with the pop-up tents, yes, the pop-up tents are pretty easy to pop up. You probably need somebody else to help you. But I always, I always dig holes to put the legs in so they don't blow away. We always have to stake it down or get sandbags to hold the thing down so the wind doesn't take those pop-up tents. So, my mind, this is less time because I had to set up two pop-up tents to get this same out of shade. Now my wife and I did talk and we said that if it was just the two of us coming down to the beach, just two people, you didn't need a lot of shade, you could probably just get you a good umbrella. You probably wouldn't need this much space, but that's never the case right now. We got four kids and all of them are younger and at some point we need to get them in and eat their lunches or get a snack and reapply sunscreen and all that stuff and it's nice having a lot of shade so all right last one drop it off in that hole just so y'all know my grandmother lives here on the island that we visit and she makes sure i fill up these holes every night when i leave so i like to fill these holes back up so a people don't step on them and get hurt or b uh, sea turtles apparently get on the beach at night so we get our poles now it only comes with two poles so in, in theory you only have to set up two poles and it makes it more of a lean to and that's what i'll show you first you got to figure out where the wind is coming from right now the wind is coming from this direction and it's blowing this way so i don't want to put the poles on this side because the wind's going to catch it and pull my bet my my tent so i need to go to the other side the other side over here set up these poles. So I come right here. All I do is put 
this ball. I put this ball under. And I stand it up. Boom. That's pretty easy. Okay. I come back over here. Do the same thing on this corner. Stand it up. Boom. And so now there's your shade. Okay. Now. I probably could pull it even tighter because it's not extremely tight. At this point, I will not pull it tighter because I've already buried my sandbags. But a lot of that's because I was trying to hurry through the video. Now, what I've done is I've made other poles just here and here. And once again, if you're gonna buy this product, go ahead and spend the extra, I think it's like $29 and get the aluminum ones so that they can um, stay up so they could stay in your bags. Come under here. But notice how that tension started pulling on this bag. And if that bag wasn't buried, it would come closer, which would then make this actual fabric not be as tight. And we want it tight. Come over here and get my last one. And get my last, my last pull that I made just out of scratch for three or four dollars. You're at home and you don't want to spend $29 and you have the capability of boom. And that's how I now have pretty much head height. If you need more height out of it, you can then take your holes, bring them a little closer, and it lifts it a little higher. Okay? Now, once again, the wind is coming in here and pushing out the back. Sometimes the wind might come directly from the ocean and come in, or come, it comes from the back. If the wind ever picks up really hard, okay, I've got my bags buried, they're probably not gonna move. If the wind ever pushes this thing down, it's not gonna drag my bags out of the ground. It will put too much pressure on these poles. These aluminum poles are made out of aluminum. Aluminum is a great product, of course, because it's lightweight. But, but most people know that aluminum is not the strongest material. I've broken two poles by my fault because I had too much tension. I pulled this thing way too tight. Today, I didn't purposely set it that tight. And my pole was bending because it was too much tension. Now, what you could do is just redirection it out so there's not so much tension on it. I didn't do that. I just didn't pay attention. I kept setting it up and then noticed it just popped out. Another day, we had a lot of a rainstorm blow in. So I, I was trying to hurry and clean things up. The wind was coming in from this direction. I let those in down. Of course, that means the wind's gonna blow my tent this way. So I put two poles right here just to hold it enough or put a pole here and it broke the pole. Once again, that was, I think my fault, not the, the company's fault or the, the not as good of a product. So that's how we set up this, this tent. Um, it's pretty easy. I think the video is what, 18 minutes long now? Mm -hmm. 18 minutes and so on and so on. I'll then take all my chairs and put underneath it. Some, some little things that I would recommend about this product is that if your pop-up tents were good when a rainstorm would come, because you could, if it wasn't a windy rainstorm, you could lower the tent down, everybody huddle up underneath it for a quick minute, the storm passes, you let it back up and so You're not gonna lower this thing down and get underneath it. Now, one day we lowered it down, we just took all the poles out from underneath, moved the chairs, took the poles, and let it come down to the ground. And then later come back out and put the poles back underneath it. And so that worked. Another thing is that if, if, uh, if you only have two poles, and the wind's coming in this way, which the sun's rising this morning, then your, your tent's gonna be tilted down in this angle, and there's really not gonna be any shade because the sun's coming in. So that's why it's important at, at some time, I think that you use all four poles, that you keep it nice and tight, you bury the bag so they don't move or won't pull out of the ground. And then right now the sun's up over there and I've got shade from this point over to that point. So it's a, uh, it's a great product. I'm not necessarily saying that, that Nesso is the, it, there's Ziggy Shade and there's a few other ones. I've just enjoyed this Nesso product. If you're Nesso's company, just let you know, I've, I've probably uh, explained this whole thing to at least 30 people this, this time because everybody sees it. It's a newer product down here in the South and everybody sees it and like, oh wow, that looks really cool. And, um, and I enjoy it. So I want to take some time to do a quick review this morning. I thank my nephew, uh, uh, Braden for coming out and helping and um, uh, hope you enjoy it, all right? Thanks guys.